Hey guys, so today we're going to answer a subscriber question, so let's get into it. And the question in question was, Frederick, I am a front-end developer, or rather I'm starting out as a front-end developer and I someday have the ambition to become a full-stack developer. Should I learn Node.js and Docker and all that good stuff? Do I have to do that? Or should I do that? So let's, let's talk about that for a moment. Now, if you've watched any of my other front-end related videos, we'll, we will probably come back to this exact thing that I keep on saying over and over. There seems to be this confusion in the IT community or in the internet. Uh, it's actually on the internet because the thing is, guys, I never ever have this discussion where, okay, what is the responsibility of a front-end developer? I have never have, have this like confusion around this topic with people I work with, or with people that I know that work in the industry, or companies. No one seems to be all that confused about what it's actually about, but there seems to be this group of people who believe that as a developer, if you even, like, honestly, if you even use the term developer, it kind of entails that there's more to it than UI. Because the thing is, guys, development is a big field. And if you, regardless of what you want to call yourself, you're going to be expected to know certain things. Now, there are absolutely like exceptions to this rule, but in general, what I can promise you is that if you are a front-end developer and you come to a company, they will, they will, they will, it on the job specification, it will say something like React, Angular, all that good stuff, it will tell, it will say all the things that you expect a front-end developer to know, and when you actually come to the interview, they will ask you questions, not just about CSS and HTML and JavaScript, they will ask you about all manner of things. Some companies will ask you more, some companies will ask you less, but I can promise you that I firsthand know that the companies that I have gone to and the companies that all my friends have gone to, they don't just talk to you about jQuery. They talk to you about all levels of application development. They will even say, so we expect all our developers to be engineers, not just designers or whatever you want to call yourself. So let's get that out of the way first. So now let's talk about Node.js. So Node.js. This person who asked the question, okay, has the approach which is kind of, you know, it, it's, it's, it's one way to go about it, where you will start as a front-end developer and then, you know, transition into full-stack development. And if you are, have the goal of being a full-stack developer, I think that, well, that then the answer should be hopefully very clear. Yes, you should. Because the thing with JavaScript, which also kind of ties back to this idea of the separation that some people, this weird separation some people have. You see, the thing about JavaScript, guys, is that it's all JavaScript. Node.js is JavaScript. And everything that's running in the browser where related to code is also JavaScript. Now, the big benefit to Node.js is that you can literally have JavaScript across the whole stack. That kind of entails what I'm saying, right? Why would you, you like, why are people excited about Node.js? Because it's JavaScript, guys. Because there is already a language that is immensely popular that you now can use on the server that was only in the browser to begin with. It's actually funny because one of the main reasons why the industry got excited about Node.js is not because Node and JavaScript is a good server-side language, because there's plenty of languages out there who are ton, who are tons, but like a lot better at real proper server-side API development or web development. Go would be a great example of that, for example. But people are excited about it because now you have all these JavaScript programmers or front-end developers or whatever you want to call yourself that can contribute on the server. Only you can't unless you understand the whole application. And I can tell you that having Node.js knowledge with, when you label yourself a front-end developer is immensely useful. I will even go as far as to say that it's almost expected of you. It's at least just from my experience, because the thing is, guys, there's, I've never ever talked to anybody or work with anybody who had the luxury of just saying that, no, I only work with CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. Because as soon as your co-work, I mean, let's take a, a good, like, let's just take a simple example. What are you going to tell your co-workers when they have a problem with Webpack? Because that runs on Node. 
Are you just going to tell them that, oh no, I'm just that, not that type of front-end developer? Because the thing is, guys, regardless of how you want to define yourself as a front-end guy or front-end girl, doesn't really matter because the industry wants you to know things about JavaScript. It is almost, if maybe we should use the term JavaScript programmer instead of front-end developer to just kind of make this distinction because in my experience, your coworkers or rather your employer is going to expect you to not just know the things that are required in order to create the UI. They expect you to know everything that is associated with front-end development in today's world. And Node is very closely associated to front-end development today or JavaScript programming. So knowing Node is immensely useful. And it brings us to kind of the second point in this. If you want to be able to produce front-end applications, you have to know how a server works, at least the basics. Some people want to fight me on this. I've had a few discussions about this with some people on my co comments and I keep coming back to the same thing. If you assume, or rather if you believe that every application that you, you're gonna work on is an SBA application, then that kind of proves, I think that fairly proves my point of this this group of people who does, they don't seem to understand how real application development works. Guys, I'll give you a secret. There are people who are not using React. There are companies out there who are not using Angular or any of this stuff. They have server-side rendered technology. So if you're the front-end person, what, are you going to say, no, I don't, I'm not that type of person. I only work in React. I only work in Angular. No, what you're going to do is what you're every single developer out there has to do, which is you're going to have to sit down and you're going to have to learn it. You're going to have to learn it. I mean, this, uh, you don't, unfortunately, it's very rare that you have the luxury that you can just declare that, no, this is what I'm about. I only care about this stuff. And then that's it. If that's your attitude towards software development, then maybe you shouldn't be a software developer. So learning Node.js for a front-end developer, yes, it is immensely useful. It is probably the closest thing for you if you start on the front and you learn JavaScript and so forth, because it is vital for a software developer, regardless if you want to be a front-end developer or a back-end developer or whatever, to understand how a web application works. So for a beginner, I actually go as far as to say that I don't think it's healthy for you to even start out by having this distinction, or like to enforce the distinction on you to say that, oh, you are a front-end developer or a back-end developer. Because at the end of the day, you still have to have at least a basic understanding of how the whole application works. I mean, it's not, guys, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna put you down or anything like that, but it's not rocket science to understand how the whole flow works. It's not, it is not, it is, I'm not trying to say that you have to be a full stack developer for your whole career, but I'm saying that you should have a basic understanding of how the whole stack works. So let's find, and finally talk about Docker. Docker is a container system that allows you to package applications, which more comes into operations and server side work. So for a beginner, Docker, if you're just starting out, Docker isn't necessary for you. You should be aware of that Docker is very common at larger scale application development where you work at the, like a company. Not every company uses Docker, but it is an immensely powerful and very popular tool. But for a beginner who's just learning programming, Docker isn't necessary. You don't have to get all that into it. It becomes relevant for you if you have the desire to go into operations or ideally get a little bit of experience working just in general software development before you start looking into Docker because otherwise you're just going to learn a tool that you don't really know how to leverage anyway. So to summarize, for a person who, regardless if you want to start out as a front-end developer and go into back-end development or be a full-stack developer in this scenario, as this person wanted a learning node is, in my opinion, all, all but vital because every, every single tool, pretty much every single tool that you will use as a JavaScript programmer is related to node. It's NPM, Webpack, you just name it, all your linters, like absolutely everything. And to, to really touch on this again, guys, it doesn't matter what you define to be a front-end developer because Generally, when people talk about front-end, they talk about everything that is adjacent to front-end. And that is, notice, is 
very closely tied into front-end development. So, and then of course, uh, Docker. You don't have to look into Docker as a beginner just yet. It's something that you should have a look at when maybe you have a, years of a year of experience you kind of get your feeling for the basics because it's just a layer on top that is basically a convenience for professional level software development. Have a great day.